Behind me here is the Missouri River. It's where our city of 60 some odd thousand people gets its drinking water. People turn on the taps in their homes and they fill their glasses and they drink it and they cook with it. But is it safe to drink? Where does your drinking water come from? And do you really trust it? A couple months back, I did a video where I was camped along the river down here and I pointed out that a regular camping filter won't work on this water because it's full of phosphates and pharmaceuticals and estrogen. So the typical Sawyer filter that the, that the hikers and the campers use, it won't work on this water. It takes a special filter called a reverse osmosis filter or an RO filter. And I got to thinking more and more about it. And I checked and sure enough, even though our water comes out of this river and it's treated, it still contains trace amounts of those chemicals. And they say, oh, it won't hurt you, it's just trace amounts. Hello, we're drinking it every day. It can't be safe in the long run. I pointed out in that video how today's testosterone level in, in men is 70% and more lower than it was back in the 1970s when I was a young man. And one thing that they blame it on is the estrogen in the water. I came to the conclusion that I wanna filter the water in my house and take all of those trace chemicals out of my water. Well, one thing that made me do is it made me start thinking about it. And I started researching in-home reverse osmosis or RO water filters that installed underneath the cabinet of your sink. And those used to be really expensive but they've come down in price and just coincidentally a company contacted me and they offered me an under the sink filter just to see if i liked it just to try it out for home use i'm going to take a look at that filter and uh and install it under the sink of my house and talk to you about it whether i think it's any good or not but a reverse osmosis filter is the only way you can get all these chemicals out of the water that you ingest daily Berkey filters, Brita filters, even the, the uh, dual ceramic filter that I showed in a video how to make, that's to get bacteria out of the water or organics out of the water. Not so much chemicals and definitely not pharmaceuticals. All that chemical is flowing past us right now, still in the water. I'll tell you right now, if our family had a baby boy, there is no way I would let that boy drink the water out of the taps in our homes. Call me crazy. But look up the testosterone level in men these days and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's no laughing matter and I don't understand why something isn't being done about it. From the water treatment facility, it comes into a large tank like this somewhere in your neighborhood and from here, it's delivered straight to your kitchen sink where it still contains trace amounts of those chemicals and tasting like chlorine. Well, hopefully the new filter will make things better. Cheers. Uh, well, this is the Vortopt under sink reverse osmosis water filter, and it's different from the others that I saw in the market when I was looking to buy one. This one is actually, you actually plug this one in, and whereas the regular water filters that go underneath your sink, the RO water filters, they run about 20 gallons a day. This one's capable capable of putting out 100 gallons a day because it contains a pump. So what it comes with here is the main unit containing three filters inside here and a pressure tank. And this gives you an even flow so you don't get any pulsation from the pump. It comes with the necessary hoses. This is the faucet that goes on top of the countertop. This is nice and stainless steel, including the valve down here. And then it contains all the fittings that you need to install this so you don't have to run to the hardware store. You should be able to have this thing show up on your doorstep and get to work and install it. I was looking at the instruction manual. Yes, I do read these. <laughs> Even though I pretend I don't. I need to drill a hole through the side of my drain pipe. that The plastic one that comes down or it could be... Uh, copper that comes down from the from your sink you need to drill a hole in the side of that and it's got a special little saddle fitting where you attach a, a water line and I need to drill a hole in my countertop and I need to hook up the hoses and plug it in and also these are the filters inside 
There's three of them here. The PC gets changed every six months and the C2, I believe every 18 months and the RO filter about every 30 months, depending on usage. Uh, these two are not very expensive and the RO is the more expensive one, but it lasts the longest too. This doesn't have to screw down or anything. This just sits under your sink. And it's easy to get the filters out. All you do is lift this top tab on top and just pull them right out like that. Put the new one in and it does tell you when they need replaced. Up here it says reset. Down here it says flush. I guess that's when you put a new filter in, you can flush through it. Then here it says PC, RO, and C2. These normally glow blue, but when they glow red, it means it's time to replace that particular filter. And it also gives you an audible beeping noise when it's time to replace one, so you should hear it. Well, in step number four, it tells you to remove these plugs. These are actual plugs. Oops, just dropped it. So that you can insert the tubing down into here, but nothing tells you how to get the plugs out. And if you just try pulling them out, they don't come out. Underneath, there's a ring that needs to be pushed down at the same time you're pulling up on this flange here. And I kind of was able to do it like this, kind of push down with my fingernail and work the plug out like that. Well, one thing about this install is it forces you to clean underneath your sink. Now I'm ready to get started. Looking at the parts, if you're a basic handyman, you're not going to have any trouble at all. They give you everything you need unless you have uh, some kind of a different sort of plumbing uh, install on your, on your sink or in your house. Okay, the actual instructions there call for a 1 and 3 8 inch hole. That would be gigantic and this actually ended up needing a 7 16 hole or about 11 millimeters. That's the size that it took to do this. So the instructions are not very clear, but a little common sense should come into play here and you should be all right. I'm just putting the knurled nut on the, so on the bottom of this faucet here. And that ought to do it. Okay, faucet's installed. Okay, step two is putting the T in the line. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. To do this next part, you're just going to need a couple of crescent wrenches or suitable size wrenches. Well, this almost worked. I uh, couldn't use the supplied T that they furnished because this part down here would not mate with the standard American 3.8 uh, compression fitting up here. With the cone filter they supplied, there was no way to get it to seal. So I had to run down to the hardware store and get this adapter T right here. And now everything's fine. Okay, to install the drain line, I just need to drill a quarter inch hole right here. I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way while I do this. And then there's just a saddle that just uh, clamps on right here. And then this red drain line just uh, plugs into that. Might drill it on this side, but we'll see. I drill the hole on this side, and now I'm just lining it up with a chopstick poke through this, just like y'all would. Make sure that the hole in the, in the saddle here is right over the, the hole that I drilled. To attach the hoses, all you do is just push them in. It's a one-way connector. You shove it in, and that's it. Well, the install is done, and except for that one fitting that didn't uh, work right, uh, this would have only taken me about an hour. Now they said to run it for 15 minutes, which I did. And that was just to kind of clear everything out. And then it took about another 10 or 15 minutes to fill up that pressure tank over there on the right hand side. Everything in there is loose and I can take it out of the, from underneath the cabinet without disconnecting anything. I left enough play in the lines. So this is what it looks like now. Pretty good flow here. I'm still getting some black uh, charcoal in the line, but that'll clear out. Charcoal is what takes the taste away, gives you good tasting water. Now that's the pressure pump running. With the door shut, you hardly hear anything at all. This has a really good flow rate. That's because of the pressure tank 
Now, most of them that have a pressure tank included in the kit are going to flow like this. The difference between this one having the electric pump backing it up is that pressure tank is going to fill faster probably than other systems that don't have the pump. Well, let's see if there's any difference. Yeah, the flow rate here is really good. That's fast. No chlorine taste or anything anymore. That's going to make the coffee taste better in the morning, too. Well, the model I installed is a QR06. It's got a one-year guarantee on it. And uh, right now on Amazon, it's $240. Look at the description in the below. If there are any discounts, I'll, I'll list it down there. Installation, like I mentioned, was easy, uh, except for that one part I had to go run and buy. And even then, I was only a total of one hour into this job, so it went easy. The instructions could be better, um, but uh, a little common sense when you're putting it together, sh you should be able to figure it out okay. Anyways, I, th I have high hopes for my water now. I know that with reverse osmosis, it is taking out those chemicals that I was talking about. So we're good to go. If you guys like the review, uh, please uh, give me a like and a share and we'll see you around.